the Naomi study was looking at people who, uh, with chronic heroin addiction who have not benefited in the past fully from uh, the best available treatments. And we asked the question whether uh, they would benefit from medically prescribed heroin given under supervised condition, uh, whether that could provide additional clinical benefits to them uh, versus just another attempt at uh, methadone maintenance. And what we found was that medically prescribed heroin was uh, very safe and effective and led to um, increased retention in treatment and better clinical outcomes, less criminal activity uh, and uh, better health. Being part of Naomi, I got my life back together. I got another job. I started being responsible and taking care of myself. And How did that benefit me? Well, that benefited me because it cleared my brain. You know, it, it just let, gave me an opportunity. I did that amazing stress that was in my life of having to find that drug every day was gone. It was just like this weight was lifted off my shoulder. A lot of the um, adverse health conditions arise from the fact that people are injecting illicit drugs of unknown purity in unsterile conditions in nasty surroundings. And if you can re replace that with a safe clinical surrounding where there's less opportunity for people to infect themselves with bacteria or with viruses, and if you can provide them with a known quantity of a known purity of a drug, then you've removed both the opportunities for bloodborne infections and for overdoses, and I think it's been demonstrated over and over and over again that this reduces illness and hospitalizations. I didn't have to go out there and like figure out how I was going to get the drugs. and. Um, I had help, like medical help and, and counseling and things there, it was great. <laughs> My brain started to engage again, you know, like I, I was just living in, a, in this fog of a world and I think that I really started to think. Uh, I was surrounded by people that were fellow addicts and I saw improvement in, in everybody, everybody else. I had, uh, we had a, we had a staff of caring, loving people that were working with us and it's been demonstrated in the Naomi project in, in, in Holland and in Germany and in Switzerland that when you provide people um, with a substitute therapy, uh, they, they no longer need to engage in crimes of acquisition to purchase the drugs on the street. So it does reduce crime substantially. And because the, uh, the intake of the drugs is always under a clinically supervised uh, site, it's like a supervised consumption site, and basically we know that that reduces the opportunities for HIV transmission as well as overdose and death. I was recovering in a sense. So the heroin assisted treatment actually helped me in, in uh, feeling better about myself too. One of the things we found in Naomi which came as a surprise to us was that a small group of people in the study were given not medically prescribed heroin but a licensed drug called hydromorphone. And this was done on a double blind basis. So we didn't know who was getting it and the, the patients did not know who was getting it. And to our surprise, the people in the study couldn't really tell the difference between the two drugs. And it appeared that hydromorphone was equally effective. The problem is, is that it was a small number of people. So we couldn't be uh, conclusive about that. So we've decided as part of Salome to test whether it is in fact true that hydromorphone is as effective as heroin. Salome is a study that is going to test alternative treatments for long-term heroin dependency. We are going to test two medications, one of them heroin, and the other one hydromorphone, a pain medication. And we will provide these medications in injectable and oral form. The aim of the Salome study is to engage the most vulnerable street heroin users into treatment and stop the use of illicit heroin. Well, if the Salome study shows that uh, hydromorphone can go head to head with heroin as an alternative therapy for people who failed, um, you know, optimally provided methadone, then I think that this should be part of the treatment continuum that's available uh, through uh, f physicians prescribing who are providing substitution therapy for opioid addicted people. Everyone who comes into this study or into this treatment is already using heroin. They're using it three or four times a day and they've been using it, for example, in Naomi me on average 16 years. So no one coming into the study is going to become addicted to heroin. They already are. 
Secondly, um, you would think, for example, in a study like Naomi, that if you give free heroin to people, they're going to use more and more and more. And in fact, what we found is that the average dose in Naomi was less than half of the maximum allowed. Not only do we not create heroin addicts, but they don't go up and up and up in their use of heroin. If we connect that with counseling and other psychosocial activities, uh, this will stabilize them in a, in a way that they are not need to be involved in any criminal activities, that they could actually uh, reorganize their lives, find housing, do all the stuff that you need to be re reintegrated into society, and also deal with your psychosocial issues like the uh, different concurrent disorders I've mentioned. And you can add on that all the necessary treatment for physical illness and for, for mental illness you need to provide to um, address a complex situation. One of the sort of the advantages of having um, a Salome type study um, where you are giving medicine to people that are really entrenched who don't interact with the healthcare system is that every time they come in um, to inject, it is an opportunity to engage with them, get to know who they are. The idea is to get them in out of the alleys, get them into a medical clinic with doctors, nurses and counselors and try to break that cycle and get them to a point where they're willing to move on to other kinds of treatment. I mean, living on the street I can't imagine being easy um, and the stories that I've heard from the people that I've been honoured to meet, um, it sounds like a horrific way to live. And so the drug and alcohol counsellor is someone there that can help them work through all of their trauma and all of their horrors and also just to be there as, to guide them through the process of the study as well. One of the best ways of dealing with drug addiction is harm reduction. And th things like uh, Insight, the Salome study, and things like that are absolutely key to that because it not only gives us information from an academic perspective how drug addicts work and think and what's happening physiologically, but also because it brings people into contact with healthcare workers for the very first time. Treatment with injectable opiates has a very small but very important role in the addiction treatment system. So we're going to take care of our patients in this study on many different levels. We're going to um, provide them with a place of dignity, privacy and respect. We're going to treat them um, with a non-judgmental approach. We're going to treat them and care for them a lot like uh, I would care for anyone's mother, father or sibling. The research portion of the Salome study is funded by the Canadian Institutes of Health Research and the clinical services are going to be provided by Providence Healthcare. Providence Healthcare is supporting this research because it is so aligned with our mission, vision and values. We have a very long tradition that comes from a faith-based background. If you think back to the 1890s, a group of religious women who saw a need in the community and founded St. Paul's Hospital. And since those early beginnings, we have continued to reach out to the most marginalized and needy in our community. We really need to get from this research uh, a better understanding of what the right approaches are to treating addicted populations. And in particular, our hope would be that we would find a new approach for those people who are uh, addicted and not benefiting from current approaches to care. It's our belief that if a Salome is successful, we can make a very strong case for continued use of at least hydromorphone for this uh, group of uh, individuals. At the end of the day, if we put our eye on the prize, that that patient, that individual must live. That individual has a chance to live a full life, has a chance for recovery. We have to do what we can to give that person that chance. Listen to the people. Something has to be done. What we've been doing isn't good enough. We have to do something better. We have to care about the people, the least, the, the least fortunate people in our society. We have to step up to the plate and help the, the, the most vulnerable, the most marginalized, the most stigmatized. We have to stop telling people that they're evil because they're drug addicted. We have to look at the underlying factors in their drug addiction and we have to step up to the plate and help them. And if one of the ways to, to help them is heroin assisted treatment, we have to do it and we have to do it now. I'm working and I've done half my school for, to become a nurse and I work up at Insight and I take care of my animals <laughs> and um, that's, I just try to help people on the street. And I think what really 
came, started to come alive in me was this uh, sense of uh, trying to help other people. You know, I don't know where it came from because I've never had it before. I just felt that my mission now is to do things for others. Yeah, I want to be a nurse and I want to go into palliative care because uh, we took care of my grandparents while they were dying. And just when my grandma was in the home, I just realized they need more, more caring people. So the question is, what kind of community do we want to be? We want to be a community that doesn't leave anybody behind. Not judgment, not moral-based treatment, but evidence-based treatment. We are working towards diversifying the treatment options so we can reach all those people that right now we are not reaching. If we as a, as a, as a community, as a society, really want to grow um, and really live in a world of peace, we also need to look after the brothers and sisters that are living with addiction and who suffer from homelessness and other mental health issues. And so this study, um, is really important so that we don't leave anyone behind.